the San Diego Musculoskeletal Project. Today I'm going to discuss how to perform the knee physical examination. This is part two of a four-part series on the knee exam where we will be discussing inspection and palpation techniques. To review the anatomy, please view part one of the knee exam series. Let's begin with observation. It is important to observe the gait of the patient looking for an antalgic gait or limp. Observe for scars from prior surgery or trauma. Bony deformities can be present such as osteophytes. In addition, you can see a bow-legged or varus deformity which, if not congenital, is usually the result of medial compartment osteoarthritis. A knock-knee deformity or valgus deformity can develop from lateral compartment osteoarthritis. The muscle bulk of the quadriceps muscle is important to observe, specifically the vastus medialis obliquus, or VMO. Quadriceps atrophy can be a long-standing problem from lack of use or can result after surgery. Other things to observe for are an effusion, erythema, and bruising. After observation, we move on to palpation of the knee. To palpate for an effusion, you can milk the fluid into the suprapatellar pouch and feel for a fluid wave. Alternatively, with large effusions, the patella will be belottable. In this picture, you can see how the patient's right knee is fuller and there is fluid within the suprapatellar pouch. This video demonstrates how to palpate for a joint effusion. Milk the fluid up into the suprapatellar pouch and then compress the fluid down. An effusion feels like fluid under pressure. The anterior palpation begins with feeling for tenderness over the medial and lateral facets of the patella, and then the superior and inferior poles. You can palpate over the medial and lateral fat pads and along the patellar tendon looking for tenderness. Other aspects of the anterior palpation include feeling the tibial tubercle for any tenderness or prominence that could be related to osgood schlatter syndrome. In addition, you can assess the motion of the patella when the knee flexes and extends to see if there is any crepitus or abnormal tracking. This can go along with patellofemoral syndrome. Patellar apprehension test involves moving the patella in the medial to lateral direction, observing the patient's face for any signs of apprehension or the feeling the patella might sublux or dislocate. Finally, the patellar grind or quadriceps apprehension test is a test for patellofemoral syndrome. In this maneuver, you have the patient actively engage their quadriceps muscle, forced knee extension, while you push the patella down into the trochlea of the femur. Pain or apprehension with this maneuver is a positive test. This video shows the anterior knee palpation. Palpate the superior and inferior poles of the patella and then the medial and lateral facets looking for tenderness. Move the patella medially and laterally and look at the patient's face to see if they are apprehensive that the patella will sublux or dislocate. For the patellar grind or quad apprehension test, first ask the patient to tighten their quadricep muscle. Then have them repeat this while the examiner presses the patella into the trochlea. Assess for pain. To palpate the medial and lateral aspects of the knee, it helps to have the knee flexed at 90 degrees. Medially, you can palpate along the entire medial joint line and over the medial collateral ligament. Don't forget to palpate over the proximal medial tibia where the pes anserine bursa lies. On the lateral knee, palpate along the lateral joint line and over the lateral or fibular collateral ligament. In addition, there is the iliotibial band, which is a fibrous band that originates at the hip and runs down the lateral aspect of the thigh. It inserts on the lateral proximal tibia at Gertie's tubercle. With iliotibial band friction syndrome, patients can have tenderness all along the IT band and at its insertion. This video shows the medial and lateral knee palpation. Start near the patellar tendon and palpate along the medial joint line. Palpate along the medial collateral ligament and then over the pes anserine bursa. 
palpate the lateral joint line start near the patellar tendon and walk along the joint line. Palpate the lateral collateral ligament and then the iliotibial band as it tracks along the lateral thigh. In addition to the LCL insertion, the fibular head is also the insertion for the biceps femoris tendon. In the posterior knee, the popliteal fossa is a diamond-shaped area that is bordered superiorly by the biceps femoris muscle, superior laterally, and the semitendinosus and semimembranosus muscle superior medially. The inferior borders are formed by the medial and lateral heads of the gastrocnemius muscle. When palpating posteriorly, you are looking for any abnormal bulges, which could include a popliteal artery aneurysm, a deep vein thrombosis, or a Baker cyst, a cystic swelling arising usually from the knee joint. It is palpated more medially in the fossa as it is classically located between the medial head of the gastrocnemius muscle and the semimembranosus tendon. This is a summary slide indicating the steps in performing the knee physical exam. This is an example of how to document the knee exam. We hope you enjoyed this presentation on the knee examination part 2 where we reviewed inspection and palpation. Part 3 of the series will discuss knee range of motion and strength.